everybody, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to talk about what you should look for when looking to buy a used kayak. So a lot of you have seen me on my podcast or other videos where I talk about if the budget doesn't call for a new kayak, I would rather see somebody go with a quality used kayak versus a subpar new kayak. So this video is really going to focus primarily on those quality used kayaks. I'll go over things like determining the proper price for the kayak, maybe going for a demo and some things to consider when doing so, how to spot repairs or blemishes, how much wear is too much. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll go over some pros and cons when considering a used kayak over a new kayak. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so determining the price or value of this used kayak is really gonna depend on a lot of different factors. The number one factor on this is always gonna depend on your needs. Is everything included with this kayak? Because sometimes your used kayaks can come with some gear, whether it be PFD, maybe some electronics, or maybe you just found something that's got trolling motors, batteries, wiring, lights, trailer, anything. So don't pay for more than what you need but there's a lot of different deals out there on different gear and accessories if that's, you know, if that's what you're wanting. So determining what is a good price for an individual kayak is going to determine on a lot of factors. Number one being knowing how much that kayak was brand new. That's going to be a big deal. How old is this kayak? So, you know, obviously you know what it was brand new. How long ago was that that it was brand new? So if a kayak is one to three years old, I always say 60 to 75% of original retail. So one to three years old, this thing was brand new, uh, not that long ago, even if it was last year's model. Now keep in mind, you're not getting warranty with these kayaks, you're not getting you know, certain, certain things with this. So that's why there's a 25 to 40% decrease in the price just alone. Obviously, uh, different kayak shops will run different sales. Obviously, the deeper the discount, the less, uh, the, the less that makes the used kayak worth. Uh, if you're just in a couple of hundred dollar range there, nine times out of 10, you're gonna go or be better off going with that new kayak. But 60 to 75% of retail is a good place to start, depending on what you're looking at. Obviously, sit on top fishing kayaks are always gonna hold their value a little bit better than say a sit-in kayak or any recreational kayak. And the more niche these kayaks are, obviously the smaller the market. So if you're customizing these kayaks, if you're putting all kinds of gear on it, if you're throwing in the trailer and the motor, obviously you're shrinking the audience that is looking for that specific kayak. The same should be said if you're shopping for kayaks, you know, there's a lot out there. So one to three years, 60 to 75%. Four to six, I would say 40 to 50% of the retail. And four to six years is going to be kind of the sweet spot. That's where you're gonna see, I think, the most, the most listings with specific kayaks. Obviously, if you're seven years or higher, you know, you're looking at taking 60 to 70% off of retail. You're, that's where you're, your biggest bang for the buck if you're really on the low end of the budget at what you're wanting to spend on a kayak, that is typically gonna be where you're gonna see the lower prices, but it's also gonna be where you see kind of the rougher condition and you're gonna see a lot more blemishes, maybe some repairs done on that, and then a lot more things to look at or look into with those kayaks. Next category I'm gonna go over is, I'm gonna talk about demos and Demoing a used kayak is, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because it's ultimately gonna be up to the seller. And the one thing I would just really urge you to be considered of is the seller's time and the seller's product. Now, obviously, if you're going to demo a kayak, I would really urge you to really kind of build a relationship with that seller and don't just want to go to his house on a weekend and just want to test drive his kayak, there really needs to be, and then this is just my opinion, there really needs to be some kind of commitment talked about beforehand. And the demo really could be the last thing that you do before purchasing it. 
So, you know, you want to get it on the water, make sure it's not taking in a bunch of water and make sure it's the right kayak for you because you may have never even been in this kayak before. Now, if you know this is the kayak you want, you've been in that kayak before, whether it be new or a different model you may have owned, you know, consider not necessarily needing to demo something because again, it, it, unless there's any kind of big holes in it, you're really, you know, and the price is right. You're really, demoing is not necessarily a make or break for me personally. Now for you, it may be. And the higher the price point is, I would think the greater the, the need to demo a kayak. I know if I'm selling one and I'm asking two or $3,000, maybe it's a really rigged out setup. Obviously that person's gonna to wanna to test it out and I'm definitely gonna understand that because you're talking about a substantial investment. But if you're looking at a two or three or $400 kayak, maybe five, your situation is gonna dictate and your relationship with that seller is gonna dictate whether or not you're demoing that kayak. How to find or what to, what to look for in repairs or blemishes. This is a really big topic too and you could easily say this would be one of the most important things to be mindful of. So there's gonna be two types of blemishes or repairs. And I'm gonna talk about here is the on the deck, which is the top side of the kayak and on the bottom or the hull of the kayak. Obviously the, the hull of the kayak, any, any blemishes or repairs are going to really be of utmost importance of the quality of the repair and the, the extent of the repair because that, you know, it, how damaged was this? Was it a little pinhole or maybe a little rock that cracked it or just years and years of, of wear and tear, maybe wore a thinner, you know, a thinner piece out or has it been to use and abuse? So a lot can be, you know, you can tell a lot by how someone treats their kayak just by looking at it. You know, is the, are the seats sun faded? Has it been sitting outside for the majority of the time that this person's owned it? Uh, how are the straps? How how, how, how many scuffs is it warped from being tied down really tightly for a long period of time? That can affect the performance and the price, obviously. But the biggest thing here is the cracks. So if you got any kind of major repairs on a kayak, specifically plastic welding, which most of the kayaks we're talking about here are gonna be your US made roto molded kayaks. Plastic welding has been kind of a well-known process as to where you can buy the kits on Amazon, you can go to your local paddle shop, but you can tell really quick just by looking at it, has this been plastic welded? The best way to describe it is those of you around my age range or higher, you're gonna know about it because it's gonna look a lot like a JB weld, like a maybe or a chewed up piece of bubble gum that's been smeared on it. That's what it's gonna look like. Obviously, if you're if someone just melted plastic on top of a crack, just know that that root cause has not been repaired. I've done videos on how to plastic weld kayaks and I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more detail about that, but just knowing where it's at, is it in a, is a high problem area like near a scupper hole or is it just something that may have happened? Maybe, uh, you know, maybe mistakes were made out on the river or he hit something hard enough, but he wanted to keep using it so it was repaired. Again, not the end of the world, but the extent of it, you're gonna know really quickly if that was a major, major repair or just something minor that they wanted touched up. Um, another thing to look at is going to be deck warping. So that again, when I'm talking about the deck, I'm talking about the top side of it. Has it been sunken in or is it coming up? That can tell you how hard this thing has been tied down. If it's been stored for a long period of time, that a lot of things can make your deck warp. Sometimes it's just a design flaw of the kayak. Good resource and a bad one both are always gonna be like your large Facebook groups. A lot of Facebook groups are dedicated to specific kayaks or specific manufacturers. Some of those sites can be a really good source of information on not only what makes these kayaks great, but maybe some things to look for in a kayak because some of those people have maybe owned that kayak for a long period of time or may still own the kayak and they may know a little bit more on the specific kayak what to look for on that. So just know a little bit of research. You don't have to go down the rabbit hole so much, but you can get on some of these groups and these forums and kind of get some information on, hey, I'm looking for this kayak. It's, you know, it's, it's used. What are some things I need to look at? And they may tell you some specifics on that. And the last thing I'll talk about things to look out for, and this is a big thing that I see a lot. Make sure the drain plug's there. 
Um, and if it's not there, it's not a huge deal, but just make sure that you can get a drain plug for that kayak. Because sometimes not having the drain plug can cause some modifications. They're not all universal, but if you can still get the kayak drain plug, again, not a big deal, they're relatively cheap, but that is a good thing to know is if it is missing, can you get it and will it fit that kayak? This next category is going to be very similar to the previous one is how much wear is too much? Uh, so what are some things to look at? Again, I'm talking about mainly the deck and the hull. Underneath the hull, river rash is okay. Rash will just look like somebody went over it with a file and just roughed it up a little bit. Maybe some sandpaper, anything like that. That is normal. Uh, normal wear and tear, but if you're looking at deep gouges or what I call maybe some, some burning or color changing, a lot of your kayaks are gonna have blended colors. When you start seeing colors underneath come to the surface, you'll see some abnormal coloring or a lot of times that can mean that the hull has been whittled down so much that it has actually changed color in spots. And I'll throw some pictures and some video up here just to kind of show you what that looks like or what to look for. Um, it's lost that glossy color. It's been whittled down to the underneath layers of it. That can tell you how much further that has got to go. And a lot of times it's not much, but that's definitely a, a big thing to look for. Again, doesn't mean it's too much, but it may mean that you need to exercise a little bit more care with this kayak if you're looking at purchasing it. Another thing to look for too is check inside for residual water. So if there's standing water in it, um, you know, again, I work at a paddle shop that takes in trades. So the one, number one thing I look for is, do you have water inside of it? And again, if, if somebody hasn't taken the time to drain water out, you're gonna know just by looking in it or smelling it if there's been residual water. Now, keep in mind, this can be something if it's left out in the rain right side up, water is gonna find a way in there. It doesn't mean that there's holes and cracks in that kayak, but if, you see, if I see a bunch of water in there, I, that, that makes me really wanna check some things. The last thing too is the skid plate. So the skid plate on the bottom, most of your kayaks that are made in the US are going to have a skid plate or what we call the sacrificial skid plate. It's gonna have two bolts. It's gonna be a little black composite plate that you can, you know, it's, it's meant to take that abuse. How much wear has been on that? And a lot of times if somebody says that they've got a leak and they don't know where it's coming from, it's usually through those bolts on the skid plate kind of working their way loose on there. So if you're seeing water and you're not seeing any cracks, that's usually the culprit. Or looking up in your scupper holes. The scupper holes are very, very thin. They're just meant to drain water. They're not meant to be load bearing. And a lot of times you can see some damage, maybe some crush damage if it's been stood on on hard flat surface or tied down for a long period of time. You can start to see some damage from that. So again, just some things to look at. If there's nothing jumping out to you, don't worry on that. I'm just gonna go over some real quick pros and cons to buying a used kayak. So we'll start with the pros. Easily, the biggest pro of buying used is price. So price is gonna be considerably lower, up to 30 all the way up to maybe 70% off original retail, depending on the condition, depending on how motivated your buyer is to get rid of it. Um, you know, you're gonna save considerable amount of money. Another thing that is really important with used kayaks is it's easier to upgrade. It gets you into kayak or kayak fishing again, at a lower price point. And again, you know, you've got a better kayak, you've got something that you're gonna enjoy a little bit more maybe. And if you're looking to upgrade, they're a little bit easier to upgrade from because you've already got a lesser price point that you entered in into and your resale, if it's in good condition still, can be around what you paid for it or slightly less if you wanna give somebody the opportunity to enjoy it after you're done. And you can get use that money to upgrade, maybe go into new if you kind of, you know, you realize you develop a passion for it or you just enjoy it. You know, these can really be a great option for you. Another thing uh, with the pros is it can be a perfect fit. That used kayak may fit every need that you have and you may not have a need to go with a new kayak. It may just check all the boxes. You may have found your perfect kayak after doing all the research, finding a deal that somebody just, 
maybe it wasn't for them or maybe life happened and got in the way and it's just time for them to move on from kayaking. You may have found that perfect kayak and that may be it for you for a long, long period of time. And finally, again, like I said earlier, it gets you into the sport. Um, you know, you're, if you're looking at getting in it to a little, a little bit cheaper, just to see if you like it, you're going to like a quality kayak better than you are a you know, not so great quality kayak. And I'm, again, I'm talking about the foreign made ones where the plastics is not as dense, don't have a good of a weight capacity, doesn't perform as well. You're getting a kayak that was maybe the top of the line when it was sold, maybe they've done some upgrades, but maybe that's not a big deal to you. This gets you in a kayak for, you know, especially if it's your first kayak, it's gonna give you a better experience. And again, that's just my opinion. So going into cons. Now cons, there, there are a few cons to consider when you're looking at this. So the first one is gonna be no warranty. Most of us buy kayaks brand new because of warranty and service. Obviously with no warranty, the price may dictate that to you that that may be worth it. So if, uh, if something breaks on it, you got a good of a deal on it to where maybe buying some parts or a replacement drive may not be as big of a deal to you, but it is something to consider when you're looking at this. What if something happens or what's the worst thing that can happen with this kayak? Maybe something breaking or malfunctioning on it. Um, another thing is parts availability. Now, that also can be a pro with a, a newer used kayak, but some of these older kayaks, they don't make parts for them anymore, and it can be an issue finding parts for them. So just like I said earlier, if something happens with a kayak, it may be in the budget, but it may not be available to even buy. So something to think about with your much older kayaks, you know, it depends on the manufacturer, obviously, and how many of them are out there. There's a lot of websites. You can find some good, cheap parts on some of these older discontinued kayaks. And the final con I'll say is depending on the condition of your used kayak, repairs may be just around the corner. So that kind of piggybacks off the first two cons is if it's in a little bit of a rougher shape, even if you got in a great deal on it, repairs could be right around the corner. Maybe even the first couple of times you take it out, you may notice something. You may notice it's taken on a little bit water, even though you didn't take over any water onto the deck and just be mindful of things like that. Sometimes too good of a deal, there may be a reason for that. And it's not that the person selling it to you was dishonest. Sometimes things just happen. There's just like used vehicles. You know, sometimes there's something they may have not, not have known about. Maybe the kayak was sitting for a long period of time and something chewed on it or something if it was sitting in a barn. There's things that happen. So that's why I wanted to kind of go over each one of these segments and discuss, you know, if, if it checks all the boxes or enough of the boxes where it justifies the purchase, by all means, consider, consider pulling the trigger on it. If you have any questions or have any bad experiences or good experiences, let me know down in the comments below. It can definitely help somebody that's watching this video that wants to use it as a tool to maybe justify making that purchase. And maybe some things that I didn't cover in the video, because again, there's definitely a possibility of that, but I tried to cover all the basics to uh, make it a easier and a less stressful situation when you're looking at used kayaks. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video and we'll see you on the next one.